There's a coffee shop by my house that every Sunday I go there and I get a vanilla latte as a treat for the end of the week. Every time I'm there, I'm waiting in line. And I always just scroll endlessly through my phone and I don't even pay attention to anybody else or anything going on around me. Recently, I went in to get this coffee and I was standing in line and realized that I did not have my phone. I was forced to pay attention to the world around me. Now, many years ago, my mother was sick and she got the kind of sick where you gotta go through bouts of chemo and radiation and eventual hair loss. And one night uh, she called me to tell me a story. And the story was that that day she had gone to the public library and she was wearing her telltale kerchief to cover her head. And she was sitting at a table and she got overwhelmed with everything that's going on in her life. And she started to cry to herself. And a stranger walked up to her and touched her on the shoulder and said, everything's gonna be okay. Now my mother, who was very emotional at this point, uh, turned to this stranger and rather indignantly said, how could you possibly know? To which the stranger responded, because I'm okay. And I used to have your exact same haircut. And that night my mother called me to tell me that story. And one of the things she kept saying in that phone call was the fact that that really meant a lot to her and just being able to say all that stuff out loud made her feel so much better. So many years later, I am standing inside the coffee shop, in line, phoneless, having to pay attention to the world around me. And there is a woman near the barista who is bald and has the telltale kerchief on, and she is talking to the barista. And as I start to overhear the conversation, I hear her say, you know what, I just gotta take things day by day. You know, like that song, Oh Dear Lord, Three Things I Pray. Now the barista is slammed and does not respond to that. And the woman looks a little disappointed that she does not respond. And for whatever reason, I decided that I wanted to engage. And I turned to this woman and I said, to see thee more clearly, love thee more dearly, follow thee more nearly day by day. And she goes, yes, that's exactly it. And I said, I know that song. This opened up the sluice gates where she just started telling me everything in her life. She told me that she was on the way to a radiation treatment. The fact that the last one that she had been to was rather painful, that she expected this one to be just as painful. Plus, her alcoholic brother was also poisoning her mother against her and the rest of the family because she used to be on hard drugs, but she's not on hard drugs anymore. That's a thing of the past. At this point, I've contributed hardly anything to this conversation, and all I can think is, oh my God, what have I gotten myself into? But then she started talking about her daughter and her entire face changed. She got softer. And she started telling me about what they had done the night before, which was they would sit on the couch, they would put on a blanket, they'd watch a movie, and they would just hold each other. And they called it Cuddle Bunny, Cuddle Bunny. And it was, it was nice to see her talk about something that she loved so much. Now at this point, I had my drink and I was late for work and I had to go. I, I said to her, it's been a pleasure talking to you, but I have to get to work. And she looked at me and she thanked me. And then she touched me on the arm and she said, just saying that stuff out loud made me feel so much better. And in that moment, I remembered that phone call my mother had made to me. So I looked at this woman and I said, you're very welcome. And I completely understand because my mother used to have your exact same haircut.